the bottom's even hotter. Like th this is oh, yeah. this is hot. It's mainly worm shit, but like you know, also food. <laughs> oh, so it, it is shit. Bugs, maggots, larvae. So we're here at Symptom, Black Soldier and Fly Larvae, and we're looking at the production side of things to where we see what happens to bring these to your reptile's dish. I fell in love with Black Soldier Fly Larvae when I came to study uh, forensic entomology at Texas A&M University. I quickly learned everything that they could do, and uh, to give you a little taste, a little wet your whistle, uh, they can pretty much consume anything. Their biome and their gut is incredible. It can break down a lot. So they can be used to clean up environmental messes. And in other countries right now, there is a big fecal waste pro problem. And they're used in Africa to digest through the fecal waste. And they produce this nice organic fertilizer fresh product at the other end of it. You can actually press the larvae and all the oils in them and get biodiesel from things that eat your trash That's amazing. that you can feed them shit. <laughs> can I say that? Yes. You can feed them shit and turn them into gas. So based on the orders from pretty much forever, I know how many pans we need each day. So what happens is I get that number, I tell my team, hey, we need to make six larges, four mediums, and two smalls, because we have three different sizes to fit every different type of reptile we need. Uh, for example, like my leopard gecko eats mediums, uh, whereas a bearded dragon would eat larges. Uh, but so because of that, we, uh, we have containers of neonates that are 10,000 per container, and uh, we just kind of base how much we make off of uh, you know, the orders that we have for each day. So they start tiny, and you grow them up to a certain size. Very small. Yeah. Okay. I took a deep dive into insects that were similar to black soldier fly larvae, and quickly landed in the mealworm, superworm section of the internet. And after reading about them and learning that they have pretty hard exoskeletons, should only be used as treats for reptiles, uh, they're hard to digest and get the nutrients out of. So I looked in front of me at my study subject and saw what I believed to be a fully customizable nutrition plan for reptiles that was easily digestible with a soft exoskeleton. So from there, I worked on customizing the diet to get the adequate levels of calcium and phosphorus in that perfect ratio of reptile nutrition. And we got there. Nutritional analysis, a year later, we've got the perfect product for your reptiles. And then, consequently, right after that, this happened. So it's a weird thing for people to think about because when people think about maggots or fly larvae, they think about decaying things or waste and that, that can be a mental hurdle for some people to get over. But when you remember that at the end of the day, these are just insects and very good insects for your reptile or for your bird or your hedgehog or sugar glider or whatever you're feeding, these are very beneficial in many ways. I think it's very important that if you're considering to use larvae as food, you've got to get over the mental gymnastics of it because how beneficial it is to your reptile. It'd be selfish for you not to. So this is towards the end of the week, so you guys are slowing down on, on how many racks you guys have, but still, despite the thousands of larvae in here and the world's craziest mud pies, it doesn't smell bad in here. It's You said it's temperature controlled and right. it's well ventilated. So exactly. like, there's a lot of magic happening there. So yeah. what's the magic happening here? So everything is on a six day cycle. So pretty much this was made Tuesday morning or a Tuesday afternoon, and it'll be sifted Monday, whenever we need these worms, because uh, every day we strive to use fresh worms for all of our orders. So nobody's getting worms that are like four days old, five days old, and they're gonna pupate faster. They right. get them as fresh as possible. All right, so we're tearing it up now. 
and that is that is a lot warmer than I expected it to be. Yeah, they get up to like 130 degrees just based off of their, you know, how they eat and all of the friction in there. So it's pretty crazy. So wait, this isn't heat at all. This is their activity that's warming this. Absolutely. No, it's it's less than like 80 degrees in here, but the pans, whenever they're really going, can get up to like a, over a hundred degrees. I'm telling you, this is this is warm. This is like stick your hand in there, yeah. Like this is like I'm putting my hand in. The bottom's even hotter. Like th this is oh, yeah. this is hot. Like I don't want to get like graphic, but it's like it's warm. It's like that scene in Jurassic Park, just where he's going in on it. But like after we sift them, and it's just like frass, and it compacts, and it's just the worms like moving on the bottom. It gets so hot, like an oven. If they were in a, a metal pan, and you had some way to flip them over and crack an egg on it, you could cook an egg. On it. There's probably less than a hundred k in here, but over fifty k for oh. uh, our extra large pans. Oh, dang. Yeah. Okay, so that the small ones have the 10k. These have the larger ones. Yes. All right. So uh, now, as we go down throughout the week, you have them sorted by both size mm -hmm. and by six day cycle. So each one of these is a different day, and then each level is a different size. Right. Yeah. So we have stickers on uh, each one that tells us the day that they can be harvested. Because uh, it's on a six day cycle, they were made the day. After. So like these were made Wednesday, we'll harvest it Tuesday morning so that all of the Tuesday orders are fresh. Nice. And real quick, explain to me a little bit about the wet food so people aren't wondering what I just stuck my hand in and stained my fingers. It's all a healthy, you know, diet for the worms. Uh, it's nothing that could affect your reptile in any way, except, you know, being super fat and nutritious and healthy. And yeah, just, yeah. Uh, it's mainly worm shit, but like, you know, also food. <laughs> oh, so it, it is shit. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There's food in there, but yeah. They also regurgitate it, you said. Yeah, so everything gets turned into worm prep. Oh, uh, so they have one hole? Yeah, yeah. They pretty much just have one hole that they eat out of and uh, do, you know, everything you can. Yeah. That is not the life I would love, but you know. is just so that the larvae can break it down as easily as possible and gain as much nutrients as it can from it. So in so order to do that, they need to sit for 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, no. Everything yeah, is premium food. But the longer it sits, the better. Just because uh, you have to mix up the feed and the water because uh, you don't want to be scooping up some wet feed and it's like a big pocket of dry feed because it takes longer for the like larvae to powder. Yeah, it, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly how it is. It's like a protein shake, uh, except you don't. We're not actually like shaking anything up. Right. So you'll just have the mixture of grains, uh, and then you'll do the wet food in the middle, dry food around. Um, what's the purpose of the dry food on the outside? Uh, so we make a. So whenever we make the pan, we have a dry moat around it because the larvae are really good at crawling up surfaces. Mm -hmm. So if they're wet, which you know that's why we use wet feed, is because they break that down easier than dry feed. But if it's too wet, they'll crawl out and escape, and then the rearing room is just chaotic. So it that, keeps them that dry yeah. moat, uh, they eat all of their wet food, and then they move to the dry food, and by that time, the pan is nice and dry, so they don't crawl up the edges and just flow out like an explosion. Okay, so this, like the way you're describing it, sounds like it's it a is, lesson learned through experience. Yeah, it is, a, it is an eruption. We've had it with the ground, which is covered. In, uh, in larvae, and you have to like sweep them all up. Probably like a hundred thousand larvae. And it's not like a slow process. It's like a it's like a waterfall. It's pretty nuts. Nice, like zombies. It's exactly like Daisy whenever they climb the giant wall. I try to do my best, and I work really hard to make sure that everything's as advertised. And you know, we send out the best product. Everything is as advertised. I, I mean, honestly, I think it's better than advertised. And that's why I wanted to come here today is because every part of this process is it's pushed to its best limit and you guys are still looking for the next best thing to help grow your business. I've got it down to a T right now. My whole team knows exactly what they're doing. They know why they're doing it. They believe in the Black Soldier Fly Larvae and Simton, so we're running something pretty, pretty dope. Now, from what I understand, some of these are rescues and then I guess it just grew from there? Yeah, so I'm being in contact and supplying such a great 
product that can really help reptiles, even sick reptiles, get back on track, put us in contact with these reptile rescue foundations that said, listen, we are overflowing with animals. Would you like one? I mean, this just happened, I swear, overnight. Yeah. I find myself lucky to be surrounded with these people who have similar ideals to us. And then that's the thing is like, you can't fake two things. You can't fake experience and you can't fake passion. So what, one thing that I love about Joel's company is the fact that it's like, you guys actually care. So it's, you're not in this, you know, end results of businesses, you know, you make money, but that's not your purpose. You know, you guys are here for a reason. And, that, and that's the one thing I think is just shining across the company as a whole. And I think that's one of the huge key to your success is how, how passionate you guys are. I've seen you guys at shows where you're just, you're, hey, do you need, you know, like, let me support you or, hey, how can we, how can we take this project and make it bigger? Um, you know, and I'm speaking in pretty general terms because it's like you guys do it so often and anyone who knows you guys knows that y'all do that. So you guys are involved, so. Well, thank you. That was very nice, and I'm glad that it shows. All right, so we've spent the day here at Simpton learning about the quality control and production aspects and everything that goes into your making new reptiles food. And I can say without a doubt that it built such great confidence in me as a keeper. I think it's very important for yourself or anything under your care that you look into the food, you look into how it's made, and you don't just, you just don't pick off the most random thing off the shelf. And I can say without a doubt that this company builds such great confidence because not only do they care about the quality of their own production, they care about your reptile and you can see that. They care about the end user, the end result, and that's huge. I think that's paramount and I think it really stands out in the industry and I really think it sets them apart. So I'm going to link Simpon stuff in the description down below. I want you to make sure that you check them out, check out their products, and, and definitely get some soldier fly larvae. It's huge. It's great. But in the meantime, I want you to like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, go ahead and downvote it. But I do want you to tell me why you downvoted it so I can make sure I make better videos for you. Definitely do all the stuff that helps me out. So subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when I make other videos. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.